All right. So usually it picks up, takes a while. Um, Facebook has like its algorithm. So it's going to like inform everyone. Oh, now the, the picture quality it's is live. much better. Yeah, it's live now. It's live. So we're still waiting for people to come in. Okay. So we're going to have the first one coming in soon. Okay, they just inform the the followers of the Facebook. So we have two people coming in from Future Lab right now. So to the audience, we're just going <clears> to <throat> wait for the numbers to go up so that our friends who would like to view this will not miss out. Um, so we're going to start in about one minute. And then, uh, yeah, we'll proceed with the whole session for today. So um, to those who just came in, today we'll be having Mr. Jay Chong. Um, just going to show you all the topic for the day. Um, it's going to be a journey from student to entrepreneur. Uh, so if you have any friends or like students right now like to um, become an entrepreneur in the future, please do invite them. And uh, it's definitely going to be a very interesting session that we're going to have today. So just sit back, relax, get your drinks. For the Muslims, they can just uh, chill and wait for the the Ramadan fasting to be over so, all right so we're having 10 people coming in so all right just gonna eight people eight person coming in all right okay all right so we're gonna start at the mark of 10. all right cool so 10 people coming in now. Um, right. Okay. All right. So to those who just came in, uh, thank you so much for spending your time. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to definitely have a great day today because we have our mentor that will introduce himself after this. Uh, first and foremost, welcome to Future Lab Live. Uh, I am Hamza and I'll be your host for the day. And with me today is our mentor, uh, Jay Chong Yenju, the founder, come managing director of Jago. So thank you so much, uh, Jay, for joining us today. Um, can you maybe start off with a little bit of history about yourself and how you get uh, here today? Oh, hi. Thanks, Hamza. Um, thanks, Founders Lab and Founders. Future Lab and Founders and everybody else that make this happens today will be behind the scene. Uh, ooh, okay, talk about myself. I'm actually a Sagamat boy from Johor. And I actively participated in club and society last time. I used to be a St. John Ambulance officer. And then when I go to university time, I'm very active in Ushu. Ushu is a kind of Chinese martial art. And from there, I've been very actively in participate multiple um, contests and competition. One of these is called Microsoft Imagine Card. And I'm very grateful that I meet my friends that really, I mean, go through the whole journey with me. Especially, we managed to get into Microsoft Imagine Card 2009 uh, as a top seven finalist. Then the next one is we are very proud to be the champion for MTEC Malaysia IHL Business Bank competition last time. Yes, we beat the hell out of uh, 300 plus universities last time. And then followed by that, uh, I would say I'm a really crazy and active person because can you imagine we just tried to organize a contest called Split Typing Contest. And from mm -hmm. there, we found and initiated a day called World Typing Day. Yes, if you Google search it, you can find in Wikipedia. Yes, it's no doubt it's from Malaysia. Can you believe that? A day that marked by Malaysian. Yeah, that is me until I found. Yes, I actually founded my company before I graduated. And until today, I'm very glad that all the partners, business partners that besides me that support me until today, until I have 13 companies so far. And last year, I just published my own book called technology simplicity you can actually get it from google mm. google play bookstore you can search from it technology simplicity 
and yeah, that's a little right. bit. Of me. Awesome. So, um, so you've published your book. You have thirteen companies so far, and your you were uh, once a business owner when you were still a student, and you've been very proactive in joining a lot of uh, uh, programs that actually help you build to become who you are today. So it's great to hear that, and I really hope that students would be able to take this away for today. Uh, but um, I think one interesting question would be, how was it like you know, starting out your business early on during your undergraduate years? Was it hard? How was the, how was the reaction from students, other students, your friends, um, the people around you? Okay, it's a very good question, and it's actually need a good game memory uh, because it's like quite some time ago. <laughs> so, uh -huh. uh, I founded my company in conjunction with a competition's uh, winning. So, mm -hmm. no doubt, because of the winning, so when I found my company, a lot of people actually support me because it is kind of like the so called evidence is there. It, it, it's so called proven that my theory and my business idea and things like that is works. But before that, mm -hmm. trust me, it's really tough, especially, can you imagine my first commercial product actually come from my final project. And the final project just come from a topic that I propose myself. And I get mm -hmm. rejected three times by my lecturer, who was my mm -hmm. uh, supervisor later on, and also my one of my company call founder as well. Uh, ha, 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 ha. So, I will say three things that I can recall it. First one is responsibility because when you found my company, I mean, when you found your company, you have your friends that really support you, especially those who found the company with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your responsibility as a leader is you have to make sure it's a success else you hardly to explain to them, especially their parents. Number one, mm -hmm. number two is discipline. If you never go to employment world before, trust me, for those who are still students, you are always in honeymoon. <laughs> yep. Trust me when I say so, because last time I used to think like, ah, all these seniors always tell me outside is so tough, things like that. I can't imagine, but when you found a company, when you really go to work, it's so much different. But I didn't tell you that work is tough and work is pain. I'm just telling you is. The, when the responsibility come and when it's showing result is more than a showing a marks, you you will know that discipline play a big part because when you found a company, nobody actually tell you what to do. You mm -hmm. spend your day by yourself. You are the one that arrange your stuff. So you have to really organize it, come up with a timetable for your own self and as well as your own long term plan. And number three, sleep last night. When you plan something so good and then eventually it doesn't come well, you have to sacrifice your sleep, you sacrifice your travel, you sacrifice your whatever good thing you want to enjoy, you have to put aside just to mm -hmm. make it done. So that's what I can recall. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So a lot of uh, compensation uh, here and there just so that you can realize your, your business as well. So. Um, being a student myself uh, and also like an aspiring entrepreneur, uh, I find it quite hard, you know, managing a team, uh, especially when all of them consist of your friends and all of them are quite young, they're very eager. Uh, how do you create the chemistry, you know, to make sure that you and them, you know, they understand you, you understand them and they all go and, you know, like provide and help out to make sure that your business is going to be successful? That is a very interesting question. It start with leadership, right? Okay, especially when you found a company as a leader. The first thing I will say, charisma. Charisma is as in like when you actually really can attract them and see what you see. That is very important because the reason you found your company or start a business or even go for a job to kickstart a project, I'm sure you found a reason behind it. A strong reason that is the reason that can really engage people when they feel it they will explore so number one is charisma number two is you must always sell a long-term vision 
without a long term plan or a very far forward future, people will feel like just okay, if I follow your steps, if I follow a project, it will be just two or three months, that's it. You will feel that the motivation is not there. You have to really convince them this is going to be far, this is going to be your future and my future. And when you and we are together, our future is better. And number three, this is a must for me, is lead by example. You don't talk without action. You mm. talk with action. Most of the time when you are the leader, when you distribute a task and then they cannot complete it, you have to make it done. Even by yourself or you find somebody else to make it done so that you can show it can be done. Just like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. So talking about um, like something interesting that I, I, I realized from the whole, uh, the answer that you gave was that uh, you did mention about like some priorities that should be given on some of the tasks and the things that you're doing as a team. But in your opinion, uh, what are some of the most common mistakes that is done by a lot of student entrepreneurs that they could actually do and what 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 could they actually do sorry to fix it you know like um because you did mention that um you know like you need to be a leader you have to they have the charisma but sometimes like they do common mistakes and what are the common mistakes and how do they fix it okay the common mistake ah okay i think when i point a few common mistakes out some people will be laughing like, behind the screen because especially to really listen it and mm. especially when you feel like, okay, so similar. <laughs> okay, number one is you always do something that people actually don't want. For example, you come up with a product uh, that you feel like you're spending so much time, like three months, five months, assuming you try to invent something new. You are so confident because you feel like this is going to change people's life, things like that. But once you launch thing and then you feel like, ah, oh, actually nobody wants it. I would say the first common mistake for entrepreneurs, especially when you try to invent something is listen to the people first. Listen to what they want. I'm sure you have a great idea or I'm sure you're doing something great as well. But at the same time, do you actually listen to them? Because mm-hmm. their feedback is most valuable. What makes Microsoft is one of the great companies today is they always seek for feedback. This is their secret and it's so simple. Right? And number two is a lot of uh, students or especially student entrepreneurs that enjoy too early. Yep. They launch a product, oh, they suddenly see like, okay, a lot of people buy it. Then they forget about their long-term plan. They kind of like enjoy the travel, they enjoy their life. Mm-hmm. eventually forget the whole team or eventually like lose the passion to innovate to keep going mm-hmm. and make people actually feel like okay there's something more about them so that is second thing mm-hmm. enjoy too early uh, number three this is something for myself is I realized it after a few years back you know when I found my company my senior always tell me I'm going to help you then I always ask them what I'm going to give you. They always tell me one simple answer. No, you don't need to give me anything. It's just when you're successful, remember, do what I do to you today. As in help you. I remember mm-hmm. that clearly. At first, actually, I didn't understand. Huh? Why? Why? You know, when it comes to business, it's all about you, right? What you give and then what you get, things like that. So mm. after a few while, I realized it's about giving back to the community. It's the long-term plan for not just your company, your community, but for your own self. Because you have found a true happiness when you actually really help somebody. And that is the happiness that will drive you go through all the challenges. When you feel sad, when you when it goes down in, in your project or your or your business stuff, you feel like okay. What am I doing? Okay, should I give up? But eventually when you help people, that kind of happiness actually will drive you because you will believe that I have to success to continue help others. 
you will start to eager to help people more and then you will try to gain this happiness back that is the long-term thirst and long-term passion that will drive you really really long mm. so don't just take always give back yeah so i saw that your partner is here uh, george ong uh oh. yeah thank you so much for coming and uh yeah i think what he mentioned was uh it's called paid forward yeah so it's great to to be able to uh understand the 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 uh the typical mistakes that they usually do and i guess the takeaway for a lot of students today is to just never give up like whatever idea or anything that you would like to pursue um jay was basically telling all of us to just don't give up and just need to you need to also make sure that you give back to the community or to the people that you have helped and have helped you as well so jumping on to the next question um I, I understand that we are going through a lot now and a lot of student graduates are now in a limbo because they are not sure of what's going to happen afterwards, especially during the pandemic. So what do you think they should do? And to those thinking of starting their own journey in entrepreneurship, is this a great time? Okay, thanks Hamza for this question. Uh, you're asking about what that the students should be ready, especially in this kind of pandemic period. I will mm -hmm. say chances are for those who are always ready. If you are ready, it's no regardless what is the moment is, you are just ready and you will just do it. You, you if you look at two successful people, look at their life, their journey. I I don't think they start their business or success in a time that the so called is a great time. In fact, I have a saying in terms of from the Mandarin words, it's called a uh, 乱世出英雄, allow me to say uh, yep. Mandarin idioms. In English, it's saying that a hero is born in troubled times. Means when time is peace, nobody will see your solution as a great thing. I'll give you one simple example, I'm sure you will laugh. Last time when you try to conduct virtual conference or virtual meeting in terms of using Zoom, Skype, mm -hmm. all this live thing, what happened to your friends and those who actually you are invite them? I come and meet me. Uh. <laughs> they wouldn't care yeah. about using all this kind of virtual stuff. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to this pain time, this pandemic, this COVID is coming and everybody has to stay home, you ask them to come and meet me? No, I will say, you ask them to have a Zoom call, they will say, okay. Last time when you say Zoom call, oh, no, 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 no. They will just uh, ignore you, they even like criticize you. Why have to meet virtually? Mm. So a hero is born in troubled times, I will say that. So if you really ready for yourself, the chances is there. And I know a lot of people say that this is bad economic time, but at the same time, it's also a good time because for me, the cut is shuffling. Mm. A lot of player, I mean the industry player is like changing. So mm. if you want to be a pioneer or a leader, this is your time to stand up and do something. And when I say do something, not just think about business, think about how you solve the community issue. Because when you can help someone, means you provide value to someone. And when mm. you've done that, business is no problem anymore. True, true. True. Right, so... um based on the conversation that we had before um also revolving about the pandemic and the whole situation that we're having right now um so some of the students uh, student entrepreneurs they might have been running their business before the whole pandemic happened and now they are in the verge of like okay, should i continue or should i just stop and just focus on my studies and maybe like continue forward after that should they take that gap or should they maybe just continue on in the business and see how the outcome is going to be like after the whole uh, pandemic is over. Mm, speaking of this, um, I will say never give up unless you confirm whatever you want to do is, is a dead end. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, you must know when to say no to things and when to say yes. For example, mm -hmm. if you know definitely Okay, give you one simple example. Let's say your business is distribute flyer. Yep. 
Do you consider closing down now? Uh, it's a tough question. You, you, you have to consider to stop the business. Okay, I'm not saying that close your company. Eh? Stop that mm -hmm. business. Definitely. Because first, it's so traditional and it's old school and it's not efficient. Number two, now it's a stay home time. How are you going to distribute? Mm -hmm. I know you can find a way to distribute, but it's not really effective anymore. So why not you take this time, digitize your business? So the way that you're still evolving and then you're still doing what you're passionate about and then you still do it. Yep. All about that. Okay. Agreed, agreed. So um so now that you've shared like most of the things uh in terms of like how you end up to be to being who you are today, um who might be the right mentee for you? And what are the three things that you always look for in a mentee, in a person that you would like to mentor? uh um i will choose three simple characteristics if you ask me i always stick to three eh? actually i like three very much <laughs> the reason i like three can i can i share a little bit because yeah, sure, definitely. you have one let's say you have one trick in your hand okay people always tell you you have to have backup plan mm -hmm. and i'm a person who plays safe a lot so i always have backup plans backup plan that's why I always like to have three options. So when it comes to character, characteristics in terms of looking for a right mentee, or I would say looking for someone who will be my good friend. I would say mentee, a eh? good friend. Mm -hmm. First, you have to be very passionate person. When you love what you do, you can actually influence people around you easily and drive them together. Mm -hmm. And number two, you have to be very optimism. Mm -hmm. Don't just do the thing halfway and then suddenly when you see the down thing and then you want to give up. Or when you actually have a little bit of success and then you go and celebrate and then you forget the team. You have to stay optimism. Okay. And number three is I will always look for someone that have a great personality, especially self-awareness. You know what is right for you. You know what's wrong. Especially you know what is your problem. Mm -hmm. Because it's someone that do know their own issue or problem, that person can never improve. So three simple, passionate, optimism, and personality in terms of self-awareness. All right. So to those who are interested to maybe engage with Jay, um, basically has given us like what are the key things that he's looking for in any mentees that he's going to mentor. So just a takeaway for myself then, you're basically looking for someone who's very passionate in whatever they're doing. They're very optimistic and their personality, they always have to have that uh, empathy. They always, have, they always need to be self-aware about what they're doing and uh, why they're doing it. So, and at the end of the day, it's all about giving more than what you take. And it's all about the contribution that you're giving towards the people around you. Am I correct? Yes, definitely. All right. So, uh, to those who would like to engage uh, with Jay even further on Future Lab, uh, I'm just going to share you the link down below. Um, it's going to be shown down there. And if you would like to maybe connect with him even more, we're going to share you the LinkedIn a bit more afterwards. But I'm going to give this opportunity to actually have more questions to come in from the crowd. But uh, while we wait for the questions to come in, I have a question of my own. Uh, the question is uh, what? Uh, how do you plan on growing your business back then? Like, how do you really plan uh, when you started your business idea, right? And uh, like figuring out who you are based on the conversations that we had before and now, you're the kind of person that would think like two, three, four, five steps ahead. So when you start the idea, when you join MDEX program, how do you make sure that, okay, I'm gonna do the next, uh, this is the things that I'm gonna do next time after I'm done with this. Okay, I presume that your question is actually about like how I can plan few steps mm -hmm. ahead before I really start it, right? Yeah. Um, I always look for, okay, put it this way. In short, I would call it reverse engineering. At first, imagine your success first. Ask yourself, if I want to do something, where is the end goal for me? And the end goal is not about just a few, you know, just a, in terms of monetary wise, like how much it's going to earn. It's about what's the success 
define it first and make it so high i and and you do you you will not believe you're going to achieve that first mm -hmm. at first then you reverse engineering as it, as it asking yourself okay let's say i set a very high expectation okay i give you an example i want to publish a book mm -hmm. At first, people might thought like, okay, you have to be a legend, you have to be uh, someone very successful, so right? okay, you define it. Then you ask yourself, how to become a legend, how to success, then you go down. Mm -hmm. By reversing. Then you will figure out that, okay, actually the next five steps should be join a competition, win it, get a partner, start a company, for example. Okay, engage with collaboration partner as well so that you have joint venture. That kind of thing. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Then while you're actually doing the first step, you're actually doing the third step at the same time. I always mm -hmm. do things like that. So yeah. Mm. And um and in terms of uh mindset, right? Um moving from a student to an entrepreneur, uh what's the difference basically like when you start uh, your idea when it was still fresh and you were like hey i have this idea i want to go to mdec i want to pitch my idea and then you won that that particular competition how do you shift your mindset from just being a normal student who's just doing their daily life studying to an entrepreneur a full-fledged entrepreneur how do you shift how do you change that yeah how do i change it uh yeah eventually my mindset already like that, even though when I study. Let me uh, let me share with you how I actually go through my study last time. Um, I actually learned my negotiation skill long time ago because when I try to organize a project for the club and society, I always look for sponsorship. So when you look for sponsorship, it's all about talking about win-win situation, as in what I can give you and then what you can get in returns. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you imagine actually I go to a lecturer, I mean go to a lecturer to discuss about I'm going to be very busy for the event I'm going to organize and then I'm going to miss a lot of classes. So how, how am I going to convince the lecturer to let me still pass the subject in terms of attendance and I still can mm -hmm. skip the classes is one week before the lecture start, I already approach the lecture and complete the assignment or tutorial mm -hmm. i'm sure the, the lecturer is like very shocked because nobody will do that okay you might be the first one or you might be just a few little one so when you do that you show your commitment you show your responsibility as a student as well as you show the lecturer i'm actually very interested on this subject it just you tell the lecturer i just have don't have time because i have this planning is going on things like that and I'm really, really sure most of the lecturer will really listen to you and let you, you know, close one eye <laughs> in terms of the attendance. Mm -hmm. They will let you pass uh, in terms of attendance. But of course, you have to achieve it in terms of you really do a good thing, okay? You are not skip the classes for nothing. Mm -hmm. You do something for the community, for people around, okay? And number two is you always do play your part as a student. You finish the assignment, you do your, I mean, do your revision, your homework is still there. Mm -hmm. If you are really bad in your result, okay, it, it might not work in this way anymore. So mm -hmm. you at least achieve a moderate result. So that is my two cents. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is basically like, basically in a way you're, you're born to hustle and you somehow know that, you know, like this is what I'm going to do. And you've always have your mindset even before you start anything. So I think that's a great way for a lot of student entrepreneurs out there. Make sure that before you um, do something, you need to make sure that your your mindset is ready and then you go into it rather than like waiting, like do it first and then you like change your mindset later. So um, we have a few questions coming in from the crowd. Um, so we have Samantha, she is asking on like, how do you figure out what you want what do you want truly want to achieve in life like this is basically like your your life goals okay this is more like a, a philosophy question yeah to be frank with you i still do know what i want <laughs> <laughs> the truly one eh? 
uh-huh. of course the truly one is always the the thing that we call it inner peace but that is too far away let me one step backward uh i always start by like you know i like competition a lot because it's a way that show or so-called proof that myself can actually reach the limit so i will really look for things that beyond my limitation first Mm. I always go for that. So when I try to go f- like break through my limits, I enjoy the happiness. I, I found the happiness eventually. Mm-hmm. So if you ask me how I really figure out what my truly want to achieve in life, break through yourself. That's how I found. Right, that's a that's a very deep answer, and uh, it's gonna be like a very a very philosophical answer, as you said. And uh, I hope that uh, I guess um, achieving something in life is different from one another. Like every person, like some might want to have a car, but some might want to have that inner peace, that that feeling of achieving is for that one rather than like something materialistic. And I guess on your end, it's something more spiritual, something more closer to you than a lot of people out there, especially the younger ones nowadays. Uh, they want to own like iPhone, the new iPhone 11, whatever not. <laughs> so um, then there's another question from Sam and uh, her question goes, um, do you think having a mentor, and I guess in this case, someone more experienced is important? Definitely. It's a very good question. This one is straight answer. I would say very important. And why I say so, because when I look back what I did over the past and all this little little journey and achievement, I would say I have a lot of mentors. <laughs> yeah, my ass is super long. Eh? Okay, and then in this juncture, I really want to thank a few senior person uh, that helped me a lot and really drive me through. Imagine I joined an organization last time called JCI, Junior Chamber International, mm. and I was so young. And then I was the president already during years 24. I mean, during 24 years old. Mm. I was the youngest person among the 54 chapters in Malaysia. So with that kind of young and then no experience, all I have is the mentor and senior that guide me. And the few key person allowed me to say thank you to them here. A few key person that I really want to thank is one of it is Josh Ong from Penang. He's my really good guru in terms of life. He mm. teach me a lot about what you can do and what you can do. The other person is Cynthia Tong. She always tell a way to me that give up is not the end, uh, it's not a solution. And she always also calm me down in terms of like, oh, your challenge is nothing. You know, she always give me the impression that when, when you start in something, it is not really stuck. And then when you try to give up or when you actually like feel like you want to give up that time, she always give you the impression that no, it's no big deal at all. She's the kind of person. And then few and of course your family. Start with family as a mentor, especially your mom. If you have sibling, especially the elder one, like your brother or sister. My mom is a good mentor because she always show me how she actually support me in terms of just listen to what I want to do. It's mm-hmm. kind of support also. My brother is the one that always show me that, okay, these are the things you shouldn't do because I tried and failed before. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> lastly, lastly, I want to go back to just now when I say I want to look for Manti's uh, uh, character. It's one of it. It's called personality, as especially self-awareness. Mm-hmm. A mentor will actually give you this. Self-awareness is the key for you to break through yourself and turn you the other way. And... At this juncture, I want to thank my girlfriend, Chanel, because she's the one that changed I see about myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so having mentor is definitely a must. Trust me. Especially if you can get it like this from future lab platform. Come on. 10 years back, I not even have this kind of platform. True. You guys are so lucky. True, true. I totally agree on that. Yeah. So I guess, um, you know, like being 
being surrounded by people and being inspired by them and inspiring them as well also plays a huge role in your life. And uh, I'm truly, truly uh, thankful to be able to have this conversation with you. And um, we're reaching towards the end. And uh, I think George Wong, George Ong, he said um, he's really glad to have a friend and a partner like Jay. And, uh, and that tells, you know, that particular comment really tells on how um, Jay's journey has been so far and how he has been with the right people around himself for for quite some time. And um, But uh, before we end, uh, basically any parting words for uh, the audience that we have today? Parting words as in like, okay. <laughs> um, oh, my laptop is lagging. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as a closing remarks, or, or I will always say, uh, be giver, not taker. When people actually seek for your help, always help them because you will never know that kind of help will help you first because you gain experience, you gain knowledge, as well as you gain someone truly your friend. Mm. Eventually, you do know this friend will help you to know when. Be giver not take it. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, that's it uh, that we have for today. Um, thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much, Mr. J, for joining me today for Future Lab Live and sharing his journey uh, from a student to an entrepreneur that he is today. Uh, if you'd like to join him on Future Lab, I'm just going to pop up a link down there. So you can register now on futurelab.my. Uh, it's free. You can connect with a lot of mentors that we have today. And of course, you can definitely contact to uh, connect with uh, Mr. J. Uh, the link is also down there, https bit.ly slash FLJ mentors. If you'd like to connect him on LinkedIn, uh, he's also available, of course. Uh, he, uh, you can just go down. It's a short link. Uh, it's going to take you right away to his uh, profile and uh, also uh, he, uh, something special is he also have his personal website. It's imjchong.com, and uh, he recently published his book. And congratulations for that, by the way. So um, thank you. It's called uh, what was the book called again? If you can maybe like show it up for our audience, and if they would like to find it, yep, technology simplicity. So it's about optimizing time via technology. So if you'd like to find out more about this, uh, we'll provide it later, maybe on a uh, on uh, the comment section down below. Uh, it's also available on Google Books. If I'm not mistaken, and um, you can just search technology simplicity by Jay Chong. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jay Chong. Uh, if anyone would like to book him, you can do so. Uh, you can do so. Excuse me on uh, Future Lab. And um, yeah, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much for having Future Lab uh, and onboarding. Uh, thank you so much for having us to onboard you today. And uh, join us again next week when we talk about things I wish I knew when I started designing. Uh, and Chi and Fei is going to be stopping by for a chat. Uh, make sure you like, follow Future Lab on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn to keep up to date with their latest program. Uh, I'm just going to pop up the poster for next week. So if you would like to join, uh, this is going to be the heads up. Uh, as always, to everyone, stay safe. And we see you again soon. Thank you so much, Mr. J. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. All right.